In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a simple uh, Express application running on the Node.js platform. Um, this is just gonna be a very simple application. We don't get into how to structure your code and stuff like that. Just get the Express working and see this as a, just a start for uh, start coding with Express.js. Um, the application we're gonna build is some kind of to-do application and I'm gonna show what the end result should look like. The application is listening to port 8000 uh, and it's just a simple index uh, page with a link uh, where I come to a URL slash to-do uh, and I can write something um, uh, click the button and it will post like just a to-do list uh, uh, like this. So as you see it's a very simple application uh, and we're gonna look uh, how to write a web application that's listening on some URLs, uh, rendering views, uh, taking post data, uh, making a dynamic page uh, and uh, some other stuff so as I said it's just a simple application but uh, a good start to see how express.js is working so let's start coding uh, here's my IDE uh, it's an empty directory except for um, the code standard files uh, so I don't use any vagrant and stuff like that. I'm, I'm just running it in, in my local computer at the moment. So I think we start from the beginning and the first thing we do is uh, creating a um, uh, package.json uh, and we're running an npm init and I'm doing it the lazy way so I don't have to answer a, a question I just put the flag yes on and it will answer every question with a yes and just give me the default um, stuff it, it, that I don't recommend doing this uh, but I don't in this movie I don't want to go through all the alternatives um, so okay uh, and we're gonna write an express application. So the f first thing we do is npm install express, and I wanna save it in the pack package JSON. And it's not a um, dev dependency; it's a real dependency. So just a save flag uh, like that. We do it install uh, and now I'm get, getting some warning because I just uh, my package JSON is have some empty fields but I'm just gonna ignore that uh, well we got the node modules we got the express and all the stuff needed for express it's quite uh, many um, dependencies uh, so okay uh, next thing I'm gonna start some file that we're gonna use as a start file and I'm gonna call it app.js someone calls it server.js and, and stuff like that but in, in my case I'm gonna call it app.js so it's here we're gonna write a code so let's start uh, first of all uh, we're gonna do the require statement uh, and we're gonna require express like that uh, and we're gonna create the variable uh, app and we are going to do this uh, like this if you look at the express documentation this is the way to create or create an instance of, uh, of this express library so what can we do with that um, uh, the, th the first thing I think is just um, trying to start on HTTP server so we're gonna listen on some port 
so I'm gonna do a, a variable called port uh, and I'm gonna use a, a way to to write this that's um, pretty common uh, the first thing is using process dot end punk port to get the uh, opportunity to the the user that start this application to specify which on which port uh, if we don't get any value in that uh, thing we are gonna use the port 8000 so that that's the default port we're gonna listen on our uh, HTTP server it's gonna listen on uh, okay so how do we get it to listen on this uh, I'm gonna take some code and copy in like this uh, the app instance have a method called listen and that's where we put our port and a function and when we start the application it will start a web server that's uh, listening on port 8000 so let's try that one uh, open up the terminal node app.js and it was something wrong oh I forget that's uh, like that was a comment uh, and we see we are listening uh, let's try the uh, the application in the browser uh, and well it seems like the server is responding in some way uh, but it says cannot get slash the root directory in this application and of course we haven't specified any roots or URLs that this application should respond to yet so that's the first thing we have to do we're gonna uh, create some com content when we call this application uh, let's get back to uh, the code uh, and I'm gonna put that down so we wanna listen to um, the when we get request at a specific URL and the way to do it is using app uh, and telling app what HTTP method are we gonna listen to in this case we're gonna listen to if we've got any get methods or get request uh, and we're gonna listen just to the root uh, in this case just as a slash uh, and we're gonna call a function uh, that's gonna be a callback that is gonna be called when we get any type of request uh, and it takes two parameters request and response um, which help us in the request we can analyze the request to this URL and in the response we can uh, create a response that we can send back to the client that called us uh, like that so let's just try we just gonna try that this work so use the response uh, and we can use a method on that object you can check this object up in the documentation but it has a method called or function called send and here we just can send some well let's send some uh, h1 html like that uh, and we save that and we go to the, the terminal um, Oh, we can just go to the page and we can try it again well we get the same results and that's because we haven't restarted the application uh, and we have to do that control C run the node app and again and it will work 
You see, we called uh, the root directory and we got our hello in a h, uh, h1 tag. Um, since we're gonna do this a lot of time, it, it would have been nice to have some program that uh, that can help us with this. Uh, and there is a program you can use, it's called Nodemon. Um, I think it, uh, we can just go to check that page out uh, well it has a, a github page and you can read about it here and how to install it the way to install it is install it like a npm install but with the flag g meaning globally we install this program globally so we can use it with any of our uh, projects uh, so I, I've already done this so I don't need to do it again but now I can use nodemon app.js and you see that it's starting the server just like uh, the same and it's watching some files so when I do a change, just like this, and save, you see it restarted the server and I don't have to do this manually. Um, so, yeah, we were right there. We have uh, done our first um, page, but I want to do this. I, of course, I don't want to write all my HTML like this in a string. And stuff like that. I want to have some kind of view, some kind of template that takes care of my HTML rendering, and that's one thing that uh, Express can help us with. Um, I'm gonna use a template uh, engine called uh, Handlebar. Uh, Express supports a lot of different uh, template engines. Uh, uh, like Jade or whatever, uh, you can check different kinds up. But I'm gonna use one called uh, um, Handlebars, and to do that, I must install a package called Express Handlebars. Uh, this this package uh, Express doesn't include this, so we have to install it separately. So I'm going to I'm gonna use the other console clear npm install express handle uh, what's its name handle bars yeah uh, and we're gonna do it with save and it's gonna be installed yeah work fine and now we can do a require uh, and I'm gonna call this it's a long name so I take a short version like this require uh, express handle bars like this uh, uh, okay so we're gonna do uh, a couple of things more before we can get this thing work we can just Fix that. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we have to tell Express that we're gonna use this Express handlebars, and we gotta configure how to use it and, and where to look after the things. Uh, so the first thing we are gonna do is gonna we're gonna use the app uh, engine function. Uh, and call it some kind of name HBS for handlebars uh, and we have the opportunity to configure how to use ex um, express handlebars uh, I'm just gonna use two different um, uh, options but if you read the documentation you're gonna find a lot more uh, I'm gonna use the um, the reference here, and it takes a 
option object uh, and we gonna set what we call the default layout uh, and this is gonna tell um, express where to look for uh, the thing we call layout it's a place where we're gonna um, put HTML code that every page use so we don't have to repeat ourselves when we uh, are making um, templates uh, so we're gonna call that index we're gonna look at this in a minute uh, and we gonna I don't want to use uh, every template and write dot handlebar so we're gonna use a, a extension name uh, that's some shorter and it's gonna be HBS for handlebars uh, so it's not the same as this is just a, a, a key uh, when we when we create this uh, configuration in the engine uh, this is the extension name of the of the files we're gonna use we're gonna look at this later uh, one thing more app set and we gonna set the view engine in express to use HBS and this and this is the connection we're gonna configure the engine give it um, a key and we're using this key uh, when we do app set in the row below like that okay hopefully we got our template engine ready uh, so to check it out we have to create some uh, templates uh, and the default way uh, Express is doing this uh, we don't have to specify we could specify how to do it but it's gonna look in a folder called views so we're gonna create that view views like that uh, and we have tell it that is gonna have a default layout called index so we have to create a folder called layout and we're gonna put a file called index hbs we have told them that we are gonna use hbs as the file extension and uh, and here now I'm gonna take some code from another project uh, because it's pretty boring to write HTML uh, but this is just a HTML with a body uh, and we are using some handlebars expression you see this syntax uh, what it's gonna do is that this HTML is always gonna be used uh, but, but we can write single templates that just injects the code we want in the body so we don't have to repeat ourselves and write all this head stuff uh, and so uh, every time you can do a lot more with with this if you want but we, we're gonna leave it like this so uh, we have our layout and its index and we now can create a template uh, what are we going to call it? We can call it home HPS uh, and here I just write my HTML hello uh, I don't remember what the text was uh, we're just gonna save it like that uh, and uh, we the, we have the server restarted and uh, we have our template we're gonna go back to the app and tell when we go to this URL we don't wanna send this we wanna render this template which will be inserted in this body stuff uh, so instead of send we're gonna call render and the name of the template and since it's in the view folder directory uh, it's called home we just have to call it by saying home like that 
Okay, let's try. Reload, and we got something wrong. No such field. Views, layouts, index, HBS. Did I do something? Layouts. Oh, you see, I forgot. It's not layout, it's layout. Very important because uh, Express is using what we call uh, convention over configuration. So it, some default values, if we don't specify it, Express is going to look in different directory like views and layouts. If I forgot the S in, uh, in layouts, we're going to get this kind of error. Let's try it again, and here we are. This is our template that we render. Well, nice. So, next thing. Uh, in my example that we looked up in our template, we have a link to slash to do to get to the to do list. So, I'm gonna um, create a link that goes to slash to do. And uh, see all to do's like that. And when we tried it, we see we got the link. And when we click it, oh, well, cannot get to do. Of course, we haven't specified a URL or a root that's listening. We just have the, the root uh, slash. So we're going to do it again, app get to do and we gotta get a function request response like that uh, and when we get here we gonna render another view so just response render and we gonna call it to do um, of course, we haven't created this yet. Um, I, let's take that. Uh, so we have to create this view uh, and to do HBS like this and All to do's and the meaning of this is is to show all to do's we have in our our application uh, and we're gonna do it in in some kind of list and stuff like that. Um, at this moment we we haven't have any opportunity to create to do's uh, and we don't have any code that save to do's and stuff like that. Uh, and in this case. We're not gonna use a database. We come back to that later in the course. So in this case, I'm just gonna save all the to-dos in a. We can call it a global variable uh, in the app GS. Uh, so I'm gonna have a. We can have it here. More to-dos. That's gonna be a array with some kind of we can have some kind of uh, uh, object in it with the key to do uh, and a message, just a to do message. So we have an array with one item at this moment. So we have some kind of data. Of course, we're gonna later on save this in a database and, and have it more persistent. This is not a good way. I mean, just for this example, we, we're gonna hold on to this variable. Uh, okay, so I have some data now in this uh, to-dos and I wanna send this to the view or to the template and let the template presents this message. In the future I'm gonna have a lot of these objects and I wanna present every of them in a list. So the way to do this is to add an object and what do we call it? Data maybe and we gonna put to do's 
in this. So we're gonna, as a key data, we're gonna send this array to the template, to the view. So let's go to the view and we're gonna, in some way, uh, put it in a UL list. Um, and now we're gonna use some what we call handlebar <laughs> script or template uh, language or what, whatever uh, to do some kind of iteration over all these um, to do's we have in the array we get in the data array and, and we can use that with uh, these templates uh, and we're gonna use uh, it like this uh, to, of course, you can check this up in the handlebar uh, documentation. How to how different ways to do it, but I'm gonna do a each on what did we call the the key on each data, which will represents in the to dos here. Uh, each data, and we're gonna put on uh, kind of and to that we, we, we can call this a for each loop or each uh, each loop on the array so for each data we're gonna present a le tag list item tag that's gonna put out the to do's and the to do's have the key to do so we in the each we get each and every of this object and we can get it with the to do so we do it like this and we in in this scope of the template we can use this this will point to the data and what did we call it to do I think yeah the key was to do uh, so we go through every object in the in this and we call out the to do property and we present it in in an um, le tag so let's save that and let's try this we're getting back reloading see all to do's and you see we added this and render this well it was the only to do I had in my um, uh, in my uh, to do's array we can add another just to see that it works and you see now we get a le tag for each of the uh, of the um, object we have in the array so that's fine we have the get stuff but uh, the last thing we want to do is we want to create a form so the user can create its own um, to do's so I'm gonna take and copy some code and we're gonna put it in the uh, to do like this uh, we can put on below like this uh, and you see it's a HTML form with an action that goes to to do with the method post so it's gonna go do a post request to this URL uh, and we have an input with a text input and it has a name to do uh, remember this name uh, and it has a button let's save and just look, look. Uh, okay we got a little form and we do a test and oh cannot post to do yeah of course same thing we go back to the app uh, you see we have get on the root and get to to do but we don't have any post yet so in the same manner post to do it 
to listen on that function request response uh, so and just for checking let's whoops let's reload this and try and yeah oh, it, it, it uh, sent back test okay so we got the form working we got a post and we're getting here the thing now is to get what the user is writing in its textbook and put it as a to do you to do in the array um, and the way to do this is um, getting the data from the request object uh, in all the before we just used the response because we just uh, it was a get it we will just render out some content in this it's a post so we probably get some data of course here you should validate the data uh, see that it's not empty and stuff like that but um, just to shorten the time in this video I'm not gonna do that um, uh, so the way I do this I wanna take this string that the user is writing uh, and create a new object like this and put it in this array so I'm start creating an empty object uh, and I'm gonna try to add to the what did we call it to do uh, and I'm gonna get from the request body the name of that input that the, uh, that the user was writing in and the name is to do so body dot to do that's the way we're gonna get uh, the data from the um, the form the HTML form and from the user and of course you should never trust the user you should always validate this so uh, it's uh, a correct string and stuff like that but um, we ignore it for now uh, okay and then we have to to do save it in our um, data array and we can do it like push and we take to push the object in that array and then we can do a well of course we can do it just like we did before just render the response uh, like this uh, we have updated the array with with the new object so we can just render it uh, well let's try that uh, yeah testing oh something uh, got wrong here okay we got a type error cannot read property to do of undefined uh, we see row 29 uh, 29 oh this thing it can't find to do this must be undefined so what's that well uh, it's not just this easy in Express cause you have to use another package to get this functionality in Express to, to read from the request body and that package is called um, body parser it's help us to get things from formula uh, parse it through the request object and stuff like that so the first thing we should do here is I'm gonna close down the server and I'm gonna do an mp install and we are gonna install a package called body parser 
and put the save flag on and here we go and something was wrong I must have Bobby body parser so okay and of course we are gonna have to uh, require it like this require Uh, and we have to configure this uh, and I'm gonna take some code we have to tell this body parser uh, which uh, kind of content type of data we supporting in our application in this we're gonna support sending data through a HTML formula and uh, this is uh, specified by using this app use border parser dot url encoded and extended set to true you can check this up in the um, uh, in the documentation uh, if you wanna do it with uh, json you're gonna listen to json requests and stuff like that you have to tell the body parser to do that uh, well i think i'm gonna put it here uh, of course, this is, as I said in the beginning of this movie, in the future we're gonna separate these things in different files, but in this first example I'm just gonna put all code in one and the same file, uh, for simplicity. Uh, okay, so I have configured my body parser, and let's try it again. Uh, okay, I don't think start the uh, no demand arc.js here we go uh, testing and we see well that's fine it's working like a charm or when I do a reload of the page you see I'm getting oh it's gonna do a resend it's very easy to do what we call a double post and there is a pattern we should use to avoid these kind of things protecting the user from doing double posts uh, in most cases the user don't want it so we're gonna use a, a, a pattern called uh, called uh, PRG post redirect get uh, and the way we're gonna do this is in the post instead of render the view again we just gonna do what a uh, redirect to the URL to do and what's gonna happen is the server is gonna send a redirect HTTP message to the client and the client is gonna automatically do a to do request and we're gonna get to do it's gonna do a get request and we're gonna uh, go to this method instead and avoid doing a uh, double post let's try it uh, uh, let's do it like this uh, okay you see my um, my to do's disappeared and that's because I restarted the server and when I restarted the server the uh, the the ver variable renewed uh, of course if we had stored this in a database we should have had the database holding all the data uh, so that's okay uh, let's try it again testing and uh, we're making and we're doing a reload and now it's just reloading the page since when I do this when the it, it happens so quickly so we can't see it but we doing a post to to do and getting a redirectory and doing a get again and avoiding the ability to do a double post um, so this is called uh, 
post redirect get prg pattern and you should use it in, in most cases when you do a post and try to save one kind of object in, in your application. Um, so instead of render I do a redirect and the client has to, to ask for the resource again. So that's it for this demo video. Uh, it's as I said it's a simple uh, express application that's just show how to get along, how to render some simple views and stuff like that. Uh, of course we're gonna take this to do it more uh, complex. We're gonna have a lot of more URLs to listen to. We're gonna separate the code in different files and we're gonna save stuff to a database and, and stuff like that. But just for a hello world <laughs> application, express application, this will do. So thank you for now.